Well, I did a video a while back called uh, this $2 fitting could ruin your day. And, and I was showing you a problem with the fitting that, um, uh, that, that, that could cause your hydraulics to be real slow to release. And I did that on a table with a spare control valve I had to kind of show you uh, more visually of, of, of what to expect. Well, it turns out today I've actually got that exact scenario. So let's take a look at what this machine is doing. This is a, um, a Bobcat T870 and a customer thought maybe the pump was bad. He says when he hits the uh, press to operate button, usually you can just start working your controls and go. But you'll see when I press the button, it takes a minute for these controls to start up. So let's kind of take a look at what's going on here. Okay, I'm gonna start the machine up. And as soon as I press this button, one, two, three, okay, button is pressed. Okay, I can hear the engine bogging down, no lift. Up oh, here it goes. And see, now I have lift and tilt. But you see that took a few seconds before I got control and that'll also lock up your brakes on your track. So people sitting here trying to force through their brakes on their track and the machine will actually try to let that drive motor drive and you can drive through your brakes and cause damage. So what's happening is, is we're not getting charge pressure to our Bix valve, that's Bobcat interlock control system. That's our safety system that blocks a uh, hydraulic flow to the lift and tilt circuit, which is found in the control valve. It also blocks charge pressure from releasing the brakes. And um, that's also the same charge pressure that goes to uh, the two-speed coil as well. Um, but let's take a look at the control valve now inside the machine. So you saw it, or I'll leave a link to the video where I did it outside the machine. I'll put it up here for you. To, you can get a little better look at it. But now we'll look at how it's done inside the machine. So first thing we got to do is get the cab up. Okay, so diving into the cab here, we can see that our control valve is found on the left side here. And on the back side of the valve, we got this tube right here. Now this tube line is what allows that charge pressure to come over to this section. Uh, charge oil goes into the control valve to the Bix valve and allows the Bix to open up. And also through this tube is where the charge oil would go into this block back here. Now this is the brake release and the two-speed block. But looking back at our control valve, the fitting right here on the back side of, uh, you know, it just looks like a standard JIC fitting where this tube line goes into, but there's a check valve found inside of there. So what I've got to do is get that tube line out of the way and we're going to pull that fitting and we're going to take a look at what happened. Um, there's a screen, a poppet, and a spring. Screen and spring and a pop it. So let's see if we can find all those parts. Okay, so here's my charge pressure tube line. Got some oil in it. Now, let's see if I can get a picture of the fitting itself. Okay. See if I can get my hand out of the way. So see, here's the fitting, and see this piece sticking out? That's that poppet that I was telling you about. See, it's supposed to be retained in there, but it's just stuck up in the fitting. So I gotta pull this fitting off and take that poppet out the back side. Now on top of this poppet is a spring. See, a spring is supposed to push that in and hold it down. <clears throat> so it's important that we gotta find that spring. Where did the spring go? Well. 90% of the time, it's stuck down inside the tube line. You're not gonna be able to see that, are you? Well, let's get a pick and I'm gonna pull that spring out of this tube line for you so you can see it. But first, 
I want to go ahead and get uh, get this fitting out. Okay, so here's our fitting, and here's the poppet. See, it comes out the back side there. And other than that, this is just a hollow tube. This is just a standard JIC fitting after that. So we're just going to take this check out. I think I explained what this check is for. It's kind of a backup. If you were to lose charge pressure, it would actually hold charge pressure in the big side of the valve so that your controls would not just completely lock up. So looking at this tube line, like I said, I can see the spring down in there. I'm gonna take my pick and pull it out. So there it is, it's actually a spring inside of a spring. See that, two springs? And what's important, why we have to get that out, if you don't, it just sits in this tube line. Where is it gonna go? It's gonna go shoot into the big side. Now there is a screen over here on this other side, but why leave extra metal in your system? Just don't forget to find these springs and get them out. So now all we gotta do is put the machine back together, put our tube line back on and, and see if it works any better. Well, I just finished putting everything back together. So let's test it and, uh, and see if that, uh, those functions will release a little quicker. Okay, I'm gonna press the button. Three, two, one, press to operate. Yeah, so now I have instant controls and drive. So hopefully that makes sense. And like I, I said in the other video, you probably, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but that, that poppet is kind of a redundant or a um, secondary type, um, check to kind of hold that charge pressure in that side in case you were to lose charge pressure it just gives you a little bit of functions it doesn't lock you down immediately so kind of a safety not 100 percent actually bobcat actually recommends removing those parts um, so i don't know if you got a machine you might want to just go ahead and knock that stuff out you know before it does cause you an issue down the road because more than likely it is going to cause an issue down the road but any questions on that uh, please let me know thanks for watching and i really appreciate the support guys it means a lot